Pricing your packages, it's one of those things that most new, even seasoned coaches struggle with. Even I did for a very long time. And a lot of the times it happens because of one fundamental reason. And that reason is because we associate the price of our package to our self-worth. At some point you ask yourself this question, am I worth getting that much money for that service? And because of these reasons, it becomes incredibly hard for a coach to be able to fairly and confidently price themselves. So how does one price their package? The number one rule to be able to price your packages most effectively is to stop pricing based on your value, stop pricing based on the number of hours you dedicate to a package, but start pricing based on the result that you drive for your client. It is also sometimes known as return on investment that a client receives when they get a service from you. And when you're pricing based on return on investment or the value that they get from you as a coach or result that they get from you as a coach or with you as a coach, what tends to happen is now it's much easier for you to put a price point to that result. Let me give you a few examples. Let's say you're a business coach and you are going to help the company that you're working with gain another million dollars in revenue, say $100,000 in revenue. If they are going to generate an additional $100,000 or a million dollars in revenue, you can safely say that if you priced yourself at about 10% of the return on investment that they're going to get, that the pricing is going to be fair, which means that if a client is generating $100,000 after working with you, you can fairly price yourself at $10,000 as a coaching package. And that makes it also really easy for you to position yourself. You can literally say, hey, I'm charging you $10,000, but the work that we are potentially gonna do is going to generate you $100,000, not only this year, but years to come. So it's a very small fee for a really large result. Now, very often I immediately get the follow-up question of saying, but Ajit, what about health coaches? What about life coaches? What about high performance coaches? Well, all of these different types of coaches can create an ROI model that directly correlates to the outcome that the client is getting. Let's take an example. If there is somebody who's coming into you as a health coach and they're saying, hey, listen, I wanna work with you to lose 20 pounds of weight. Instead of simply associating yourself to the result of 20 pounds of weight, ask them, what does it mean for you to lose 20 pounds of weight? Well, it might mean that the person now has more energy. It might mean that they have a condition that requires them to lose 20 pounds of weight and now they are more managed in that condition. It may mean that it is easier for them to work longer hours. It may mean that they have a better relationship with their kids or their loved ones. All of them are great returns on the investment that they're going to make to lose the 20 pounds. You can directly correlate to a lot of these results into direct outcomes in their careers. For example, if somebody is more productive at their work because they lost, lost 20 pounds of weight, are they likely to transition to a different career next year? Are they likely to be more confident, which may mean that they will get a raise next year? And because of all those different variants or different possible outcomes for that loss of weight, instead of trying to find out an ROI for losing 20 pounds, find the ROI that actually translates to their life. And that's true for their life too. If somebody has a poor relationship with their partner, which means that every day they might be stressed, they might be struggling, they might be feeling unhappy, which may be reflecting in their work. If it's reflecting in their work, it may be they're not that much of a high performer at work. Maybe their career has stagnated. Maybe they're not able to see themselves in the greatest light. Maybe they're losing confidence even. All of those things mean that their career is stunted and their career is not seeing the growth that they would really aspire to or want to or have always desired for. What is the cost of not having the career of your dreams? What is the cost of not having the results that you always wanted? See, now you can associate a number to this person's journey. And because you can associate a number, depending on who you're working with, you can now correlate to the investment they need to make for them to experience that outcome or move towards that outcome. The only caveat in pricing yourself against the result or value of result that a person has is the capability of that person to actually pay a certain amount of money. That means if you're working with somebody who wants to lose 20 pounds, but they only make $40,000 a year, they might not be able to afford to pay you $10,000 even if the value of result is worth $100,000 to them. If they're only making $40,000 a year, they may only be able to pay you $2,000 for that coaching because that's all they can afford. So there is the context of affordability, which also may mean that the market that you address 
maybe in a particular bracket where the income is at a particular level. So your pricing is not compromised by the income ability of the person that you're actually talking to. The second thing, and this will be a great determinant to know which market you even work with, is know your hourly rate. To know your hourly rate, you wanna know how much money do you wanna make this year? A lot of coaches don't try to answer this question. They don't wanna share how much they wanna make this year because it feels too ambitious or too under ambitious. You're in the safe container. Nobody's asking you how much you wanna make this year. But I would invite you to ask that question honestly to yourself and write a number down. Money loves the energy of directedness, which means if you state that you wanna make X thousand this year and you say it and you mean it and you pursue it, it's more likely to happen for you versus you dilly-dallying around it versus you being unsure about it. Once you have this number divided by 12, so you know how much you need to make monthly. And once you have your monthly rate, find out how many hours you wanna work in a month. And based off of that, find your hourly rate. The reason why this hourly rate is so important is sometimes your hourly rate might be $500 an hour, $200 an hour. Now somebody who's not making that kind of money might not be able to afford you. And that is why you may sometimes say, hey, right now I only serve a market that can afford my hourly rate, $100 an hour, $200 an hour, $500 an hour. And because of that, you may pursue only a certain type of market, which will make your pricing a lot more easier. You'll not think everybody is my client. You'll not think everybody can be enrolled. You will know that a particular type of person is a person that would say yes to my kind of packages because of what my hourly rate is that makes my packages in this range. And because it's in this range, only these kind of people can actually afford it. So getting that clarity of what's your hourly rate actually helps you really find out who you're going to sell your packages to and what's the pricing of your package that is most appropriate. The third thing that I wanna share that will help you price your package is have an understanding of what is the minimum that you will be charging. Here's what I mean. Often I talk to coaches who are just starting out, they're new coaches, and because they don't have a frame of how to price their packages, they would have really weird packages. Like they would have, I work with you for six months and the price is $1,200. Or I work with you for a year and I'm gonna charge you 100 bucks a month. And while I understand the heart of it, that you wanna be generous and you wanna really contribute and you really wanna get this business started, you were just, dramatically undervaluing yourself and you're actually doing a disservice to your client. And here's what I mean. When you underprice yourself, you get a less commitment from your client, which means there's a very big likelihood that your clients are harder to follow through, they commit but they don't take action, they usually never deliver to what they said they're gonna deliver to, and honestly, they're not seeing progress. And it's not to do with your coaching. It is very much to do with the commitment that they have to the transformation. And that is probably because you've underpriced yourself because you just didn't value yourself. Which is why I'm giving you some benchmarks. If you're a health or well-being coach, you should not have a package that is under $1,500, $1,500. And if you're from a different country, figure that piece out by translating how much that means for your country, right? But $1,500 is the minimum that you should have as a life and a health coach. If you're a business high performance coach, then your packages should not be anything less than 3,000 for three months. Never have a package that is less than $3,000 for three months. The value you're generating for your clients is humongous. It's so much for a life or a wellness coach or a business coach that anything less than that, you're probably underselling yourself. And this is for three months, which means if you do a six month, 12 month, just keep increasing your pricing based on what that really looks like for a year. And the reason why I wanted to give you these frames is mostly because I know how heart-centered a coach can be, how heart-centered you could be. And because of that, you would probably always struggle to really appropriately value yourself. These bare minimums will help you at least get started into a place which is a decent pricing for your coaching packages. Now here's the last piece I wanna leave you with. While I can give you a benchmark, when you say your coaching package, it must sound like you actually mean it. Because if it doesn't feel like you actually mean it, if your voice is shaky, if you're underconfident about it, the client is gonna feel it and they're going to not want to say yes because they will feel that you're not confident in your skill and that's why you're not probably confident in your price. So you want to practice before you actually go out and say this to any client. You wanna practice your packages. How will you communicate the package? How would you communicate the price? How would you make sure that you communicate the price and then take a pause? Don't start to discount yourself immediately. Don't start bonuses. Don't say I'll give you a payment plan. Just make your offer clear and straightforward. And before you do that, 
do it for yourself. Do it in front of a mirror, do it with a friend, but practice, 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 practice before you actually make this offer. So when you make the offer, it's confident, it's clear, it gives you the confidence, it gives the client the confidence, and you will have a much easier enrollment into your coaching packages. Which part of this video was the most useful exercise or the useful tip that I gave you today? Share that with me in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. This is Coach Ajit, and I'll see you in the next video.